Tony Katz, great to be with you. Facebook, Tony Katz Radio. Instagram, Tony Katz. Be sure to follow me there. Let me go to the phones. Let me go to Sherry. Sherry, welcome to the show. What's going on, Sherry? Hi. I just had a my experience with the so-called wage gap. Um, I've been in factories for 45 years. We always made the same amount. Men and women didn't matter. And then the W-2s are passed out in January, and the women made less because they were calling in with a sick kid, and they were they refused to work the overtime. So that's part of the screaming about a wage gap. And, and it's very true. So so part of what isn't accepted in the in the numbers, and you're absolutely right, are certain cultural realities and certain other realities. Uh, you right. cannot, no matter what you people claim, they can claim they're a man, they can claim they're a woman, they can claim they're a fish, whatever it is, only certain biology allows you to have a child. Right. And, and there's nothing anybody can do about that, and it will take time away from work, and it will, in some cases, prevent uh, well, or limit or it, it slow down certain levels of promotion and other economic opportunities. Because if you mm-hmm. make that choice, other choices do get affected. So that's well, that's first and foremost. Uh, right. But Thomas Sowell, this goes back to the goes back to the seventies, maybe the early eighties. Thomas Sowell, the economist, Thomas Sowell, uh, the 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 mind um, that that he that he is. Um, uh, discusses the fact that that um, if you were to take a look even back then um, of uh, at, at, at categories of people and what they make, what you will find is that when you compare people of the same uh, education, when you compare people of of the same um, uh, st- uh, stripes, right? So the same education, the same opportunity, they make, regardless of their men or their women, regardless of of, of color, they make the same money. And 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 it's fascinating to hear him uh, discuss this and and get into this, that again and again, the the numbers uh, show themselves this way. So the very idea of the of the of the of the wage gap doesn't exist if only because it doesn't include the concept of choices right good choices and bad choices one of the the ultimate realities is that we don't tell people that they will be negatively penalized for the choices that they make when those choices are bad choices. What we want to do is tell them that even if they make bad choices, that still somehow everything will work out for them. As a matter of fact, we should save them from themselves. A ridiculous nonsense nonsense concept. It's a nonsense concept. Now, I actually have it here. Um, it goes back to William Buckley, uh, his show Firing Line. So this is November 1981. It's Thomas Sowell and Harriet Pilpel. Well, I'll, I'll bring it up in a second. I, I got to get it to, to the right place. So it's it's William F. Buckley's show, William F. Buckley, the creator of, uh, of, of uh, National Review. And they're having this conversation about race and gender gaps. I wasn't planning on playing this. I just had to go and and find it. 1981. Listen to the man himself. I'm going to ask you some questions about the economics of job getting in terms of the blacks versus the whites. The statistics I was able to pull together indicate that at the present time, white males make $17,427 on an average basis for the year. Black males make 12738 White females make 10244 and Black females make 9476 It is clear from these figures, as indeed I think it's clear to most of us from what we see, that there is a discrimination against blacks and against women in our present system. Since not all blacks will be superior, how would you try to even that out so that there would be some equality of job opportunities? I'm sorry you missed the earlier part of the program when I pointed out 
that uh, where you find uh, people not represented evenly, that does not show the institutional effect because almost nowhere in human affairs do you find people evenly represented. Well, if, you, if you compare comparable people with respect to age, with respect to education, etc., you get a totally different picture, both with respect to blacks and women. Now, the figures that I saw, for example, show uh, more recently that if you take black families where the husband and wife are both college educated and compare them to white family where the husband and wife are both college educated, the black family is now earning $2,000 a year more. The problem is not, the problem is that very few blacks fall in that category. That when you compare category for category, then we're talking about getting people a decent education. I'm saying that you cannot say that numbers collected at the employer's place of business reflect simply the employer's policies. Those, num those numbers reflect underlying conditions in the whole society, just as numbers collected at a hospital do not show you that the people are sick because they're in the hospital. That's Thomas Sowell. I couldn't, there is no better way to explain that than to use the words of Thomas Sowell. Uh, and, and it's so true that the numbers that we get presented on all of these subjects so often aren't complete. They aren't full. They don't tell a complete picture. Let's go back to his hospital uh, uh, analogy there for, for a moment. The people aren't sick because they're in a hospital. They're in a hospital because they're sick. So now, how did they get sick? That would be the, 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 the question. Right? So when you take a look at, at numbers, but you don't take a look at underlying causes to get to numbers, you are doing, that is either um, a poor job in data gathering, data collection, or that is willful. In, in an effort to manipulate numbers to get to a desired result, right? The willful dumbing down, the, 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 the willful push uh, to want to move an ideology so therefore uh, you do not bring about the totality of the story. I couldn't do a better job than Thomas Sowell. That's 1981. Right? The, one of the other things I think is so important, you know, the world didn't begin yesterday. The things that we are discussing, the things that we are experiencing, the things that people talk about didn't happen just yesterday, didn't happen with the advent of President Trump, didn't happen with the advent of President Obama. These have been conversations for the progressive in America. This has been a conversation for 30 years. And if I were to go 30 years back from this, I would find that same conversation. Mort Saul, one of the great comics America has ever seen, going back to the 1950s, does a routine where he's talking about the economy. And he says while he's in front of a chalkboard, you know, there used to be this thing called capitalism. Ask your kids, ask your parents about it, kids. It was great. This was the 1950s. This is 27, oh, I'm sorry, 2018. And we're still having this conversation. Even then, they were trying to destroy the structures. They were trying to push forth their ideology, which has been proven time and again to be false and fake and unworthy and undisciplined and unreasonable. But when you're an ideologue, you just keep on pressing because it makes you feel good. Doesn't that matter? I'm Tony Katz.